What's up, guys? So, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is directed by David Yates, who also did the final four Harry Potter films and stars Eddie Redmayne, Catherine Watterson, Dan Fogler, and Colin Farrell. And the plot of the film is Newt Scamander, played by Eddie Redmayne, arrives in New York with a case filled with magical beasts, and when the case gets mixed up with another person's case, who is a nomad or a muggle, or whatever you want to call him, some of the beasts escape. So now Newt Scamander, this nomad, played by Dan Flogler, and Catherine Watterson's character, Tina, now need to join together to find these beasts and to capture them. And if you weren't already aware, I did a series of Harry Potter reviews up on this channel. I've reviewed all eight films. Those are up right now if you want to go check those out. Uh, and I was extremely excited for Fantastic Beasts to re-enter J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. And uh, I have to say, with David Yates at the helm uh, coming back, to returning to this world, I have to say, he's come back and he's done a pretty pretty good job, you know, returning to, to this world and to, to direct it. I, I think that the film uh, definitely has his stamp on it. And you could feel David Yates directed this movie and he did do, do a fine job. And once the film starts, once the film opens, you feel at home. The way the title appears, the way the Warner Brothers logo appears, you feel at home. Even the music that plays at the very beginning, you feel like you're, you're, you're returning to something uh, that's, that's, that's very special. This first 15-20 minutes of the movie, we meet Newt Scamander, we meet Dan Fogler's character, Kowalski, we meet Tina, who at first, she's a little different uh, than, than maybe throughout the rest of the film, the way she starts and the way her character finishes. Uh, it's a pretty nice character arc, and uh, these characters are extremely layered, and I could definitely say J.K. Rowling has done a phenomenal job writing the screenplay to this movie. Uh, her imagination for this world in general is, is phenomenal, and I don't know how she creates these things, but she does a great job at doing it and sort of tying these things together. Uh, and she did a phenomenal job creating these layered characters, but also very likable characters at the same time. So you care about what's going on. Now, there is a side plot that I'm not really going to get too much in depth uh, in this review, uh, because I feel like it's, it's, it's a little spoilerific, so I'm not really going to jump into the side plot. But I just have to say, Newt Scamander and his beasts and all that, about 75% of the movie. The other 25% is the side plot, which I have to say, and it, I'll tell you, it revolves around Colin, Colin Farrell's character, uh, and it also... Uh, revolves around Ezra Miller's character, Credence, uh, without giving away any, any spoilers, really. I, I feel like uh, that this, the, this side plot, it was entertaining. I didn't care about it as much as I cared about uh, Newt Scamander and, and his journey that he was going on. This other 25% of the film, I feel like it was just there to maybe sort of set something up for a future installment. That's just me personally, uh, how I felt about that, because the, the way that it all sort of comes to a head at the end and certain things are revealed, uh, you know, it was just like, oh, okay, well, we're, we're going to see so-and-so again or whatever. Without giving any spoilers away, there is a reveal in the film, and uh, I was kind of expecting to see a certain someone, uh, and I did. And uh, some people are afraid uh, about this certain thing without giving away anything. But I feel like from, from, the, from the snippet and hint that we've seen, I am invested and I, I, I want to see more. Without spoiling anything, that's what I could say. And James Newton Howard's score for this movie is really great. Uh, you know, from all the new themes that he uses, he uses slight hints of John Williams' music throughout the movie, which fits uh, wonderfully. Uh, but his score, just the theme of Newt's Commander, the theme of the Beast, the sort of dramatic themes that play throughout, he fits into this universe so wonderfully, and the score fits into the other eight Potter scores so wonderfully. Uh, so it, it is good. I, I think this is a really, really good score. He did a good job with it. Pretty much my only gr two gripes with the film, I guess you could say. I already talked about one, which was the, the, the side plot, which I wasn't really 100% invested into. Uh, the other thing is the movie is just a little bit too long. Uh, and that might just have to do with the other 25%, which is the side plot, uh, which, like I said, I wasn't very invested in. 
but other than that, I really loved this film. I had a great time with it. I really enjoyed it. The 3D, if you see this movie in 3D, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think the 3D is very good, uh, and I, I did enjoy that aspect of the movie. Uh, and overall, I'm going to give Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them four out of five stars. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed this one. Guys, comment your thoughts in the comments. Do you plan on seeing this one? Also, you can subscribe to this channel. Like I said, I have a series of Harry Potter reviews up. If you want to check those out, feel free to do so. Movie reviews coming out in the future. We have Moana coming out. Guys, you can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video. And you can also follow me on Snapchat at RyanKing72 and on Instagram at KingArises131. Guys, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching my review for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Over and out.